How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Blue Shitting. Welcome back to Riddle Joker. Last time we were here, we well, we're dating Hazuki. It's been a couple weeks, but things have been going pretty smoothly. But we're going on an official date as a couple, which I would argue that we've had several dates up until now, pretty much, because I think a date doesn't have to be super formal, but this one's a more formal date. So we're, we're going out to town, we're heading out to the shopping mall and all that stuff. It's going to be a pretty inter interesting time, I think. And uh, naturally, she's like, did you make sure you fill out your paperwork? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so this would be a fun, interesting event. And then we'll have to see how things play out, because uh, the concerns I've started having with Hazuki specifically is the fact that she seems to be very hyper-focused on, like, being perfect and, like, feeling like she's not enough. And, like, and that's fine, I guess. But the problem is, is that she keeps undervaluing herself. She keeps kind of saying that she doesn't feel like she has to she has to be absolutely perfect or she, like we're gonna like leave her or something and like i don't know it, it's very it's not it's not sustainable i don't think so i'm gonna see how this all plays out because the nice thing is satoru doesn't really uh, like he also is like doesn't want her to be constantly giving but it makes her so upset when she doesn't so he like has to give in also last time we also discovered the the heaven that is the thighs and just everything involved in using them as a pillow. It was great. So thank you for that. <laughs> now let's continue on. Remember to leave uh, to, to fill out your leave of notice. Of course, Saturday's finally here. And since we decided to go on a date, we're at the shopping mall now. This place really gets packed on the weekends, huh? Isn't there anywhere in particular you want to go? Yeah, Let's walk around something. Uh, Hazuki? Why are you like behind me? Why aren't you like walking beside me? She's been staying at least a half step behind me for a while now. Oh, they used to. I really don't think so. How am I supposed to talk to you if you're behind me? What century are you living in? Women don't do that anymore. <laughs> Just relax. You don't have to worry about these proper manners or whatever. She looks discontent, but at least now she's walking alongside me. You look too tense about these things. Just do whatever you want. Yes. I'm I'm fine with that, but I first should know what it is. You that ranking thing. So what's number five thing? Absolutely. Sure, fine by me. Would you like? She bashfully wraps her arm around mine. Aww. You're so cute! Oh my gosh! Can't stop focusing on her boobs as she her while we walk, but I have to pretend like everything's alright. So, oh, uh, what are you finally gonna explain what your ranking keep what the what that ranking you keep bringing up is about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Now, did you get it from like a magazine or did you come up with this yourself? Hmm. Huh. Okay. <laughs> well, a lot of it was accidental, but sure. I wasn't trying to do those on purpose, though. We decided to get something to eat first, so we're on our way to the floor with the food court. What do you want to eat, Hazuki? <sighs> 
right. Okay. In real life, this happens all the time, but there's a problem because what'll happen is that you'll you'll, you'll say things like like What do you want to eat? And the answer will be I don't know. What do you want? To, like what I'm not feeling whatever you want. And he said, Okay, well I want Chinese food. And they'll be, and then they'll be like, mm, I don't know about Chinese food. And you're like, well, Okay, well how about Italian? And they're like, I don't know about the red sauce today. And it's like. Well, obviously you do care. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. They pushed the wrong button. I think I hit the scroll wheel. I'm sorry about that. Hmm. How about Japanese food then? I know it's your favorite. <sighs> Hazuki, I want what you want. <laughs> this is how she always is. It's been this way since we started going out. She gives priority to everything and anything I want to do. Before, she always used to recommend stuff she liked and wanted to do. Well, I'm in the mood for Japanese food, so why don't we go check out that place? It looks nice. Ah, わかった. The menu has tons of delicious looking stuff on it, so I choose one and ask for two. Yeah, see, so like before we started dating, she was upfront about how she felt, but now she's like mm, forcing herself. After finishing, we leave the restaurant. See, I knew that's what you wanted. Yeah. Azuki, come on, you can have interest. We liked you when you had interest too. During the meal, she'd fill my plate, making sure to pour soy sauce over my food, asking me to change the table napkins every three minutes. I know she does it out of love, but still. I really can't relax when she's fussing over me like, the, everything, like this for everything. Is there anywhere you want to go? I can see how this is going to get frustrating. It sounds so perfect, but like... It's A, like, you want to love a person, not like a yes man. And B, when we started falling for her, she wasn't acting like this. Like, that's the problem. It's like, when you feel like you have to behave a certain way for a relationship, then you're not being you. Even if things work out, then what happens when that changes? Like. We fell in love with a Hazuki who was Hazuki, not Hazuki the perfect wife. There's nothing wrong with Hazuki the perfect wife per se, but like, we liked her as she was, right? And I think that that's something that Hazuki needs to understand. Like, we liked you, we loved you for who you are, not the way you behave. I don't really have anywhere I want to go. <laughs> she starts getting a little restless. Uh, I've been meaning to say for a while now. We can do things you want to do. That's fine. I've devoted myself to you too. But I want you to. If you're going to do whatever I tell you, then I want you to speak up about what you want. That might be a good way for it. I want to know what you're interested in doing, what you want me to what what you want me to do for you, things like that. I guess as a man, I just kind of want to make you happy. I know you'll probably laugh at that. It sounds kind of cheesy and old-fashioned. Then we talk about it like adults. You know I won't judge you for anything, Hazuki. What is it? Oh, Hazuki. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't, don't cry, what's wrong? Did I say something I shouldn't have? Oh. Aww. <laughs> she wipes her eyes and continues. I don't know, be yourself. Uh, <laughs> okay, yes, I accept that. Now, can you tell me what you want to do? We continue to wander around the mall, arms linked. I'm not really doing much of anything, but still pretty fun. Our eyes meet for a brief moment, but we we'll quickly look away. I I'm glad you had fun. She points at a do to a dog. It's tied outside of the convenience store, probably waiting for its owner to finish shopping. 
Do you like dogs? Ah, you know, I'm going to be a good person. 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 I think you're a pretty loyal dog already. <laughs> the owner of the dog comes out of the shop, which causes it to wag its tail and run around in excitement. If you ask me, you feel, you, you feel pretty much like a dog right now. Mm. Well, not in that sense. I mean, the way you try so hard to do everything for me. I think, I think it's really cute. Oh, Hazuki. Hmm. Are you going to be doing something like on that list, or are you talking about something a bit more、uh, particular? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> What is this? What am I looking at?、Uh, Hazuki? It's really cute, but we're in the mall. It was really cute. <laughs> you got that? What? What? Oh, you're pretty good at this. <laughs> the way she looked at me like,、uh, like through her eyelashes is too much. It's so darn adorable. <laughs> your head pats. She pretends to wag her non existent tail. All right, I'll play along. How's the key paw? What? Hold up my hand. She immediately puts her, hers over top it. Now the other. <laughs> I use my other hand and she s h o t s What is happening? <laughs> oh, that's a good girl. When I reach out and rumple her hair, she freezes in place.、Uh, did you not want me to touch you? She blushes and shakes her head. That's fine. You keep doing tricks, right? I'll give you more head rubs. <laughs> What are we doing? We're freaking training our girlfriend. Oh, this is weird. Why did this suddenly deviate to something so. I mean, whatever. Float your boat. I guess I can't judge too harshly. But I'm supposed to be in the shoes of Hisao. Ugh, it's interesting. Of s a t o r u not Hisao. Who's Hisao? Why am I thinking Hisao? That's from. That's from something else. Pa, Hazuki. Who's a good girl? Alright, l now let's try doing both one after another. <laughs> good job, girl. Man, this is bad for my heart. This is close to hugging her like a, a, what a puppy. You're such a cute girl. She keeps doing tricks and exchange her head rubs for a good while. We keep playing this game. <laughs> Just never mind if people watch you pass. It's like, cover your eyes, children. <laughs> We finally come to our senses, however, when we realize the confused stairs control all directions. I should probably go without saying that we'll attract attention if we do something like this in the middle of the mall. Oh, uh, <clears throat> you understand how being a dog feels now? Sure. Are you ready to get going? After absolutely fool fooling probably nobody, we leave that place in a hurry. <laughs> What is this? Oh, that made me sweat. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun though. <laughs> I can say for a fact that、um, I've gone down enough of a, of a different route in this game. This isn't the only time you have something like this occur. Although the theme is a different animal. But、uh, I'm sensing a trend here, Ryder. <laughs> I'm on to you. Admittedly, it was very weird fetish. I can't help but question why she's accepting of it. Well, either way, even if she's cute, I should be careful not to do that kind of thing outside. Well, guess I'll see you on Monday then. We've reached the door to Hazuki's room. I had a lot of fun today. Let's do this again sometime. Uh, uh,、mm. So, next time, let's try to have a plan. Maybe we could watch a movie or something.、Mm. Your mind seems to be out somewhere else. Hazuki? Yes, but isn't that horrifically against the rules? 
Wait, you want me to come into your room? Are, are you sure? It's pretty late. She pulls me into the room. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. <laughs> My heart. Hazuki, you devil. She cracks open the door and surveys the situation outside. Once she turns around, her face is mere inches from mine. <laughs> she puts a distance between us while yelping nonsensically. So, what's up? Do you want to talk to me about something we can't just talk about outside? She dragged me into her room. Must be something she didn't want people hearing about. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. What do you mean? Read the room! Read the room! Uh, okay. I don't know what she's talking about. Come on, think, man, think! Uh, yeah, right. I'm all ears. Come on, read the room, read the room. Why don't you tell me what, it about, what it's about first? Like I said, I won't judge you for anything. I'll try to speak softly as I can, but she only gets more and more nervous. It's like trying to hold water in your hands. It's like, calm, calm down. <laughs> The suspense is killing me! What in the world does she want? Oh, absolutely. Huh? Well, yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, so, huh? <sighs> is she talking about what I think she is? Relax, Hazuki, you're not the only one having sexual thoughts. Uh? Oh, Hazuki, everyone's like that. I think you just hold yourself too high to a standard of, like, exterior expectations versus interior realities. Alright, Satoru. Measured response? Even though your brain is immediately going lizard mode. <laughs> Gonna take over all your thinking. Remember when I when you were cleaning my ears? I had to deal with your thighs being right in front of me the whole time. It was hard not to just move my head and rub my face against them. Yeah. <laughs> really? Because I was. I thought I was being painfully obvious. She almost jumps in surprise, blushing furiously. I better not mention how horny I was getting when her boob was touching my head. You were really cute when you were acting like a dog earlier today, too. If we hadn't been in public, I probably would have taken you in my arms right then and there. <laughs> Are you disappointed? Oh, this girl and her communication skills fail, but, it, but whatever. That's just not true at all. You're more attractive than anyone I've ever met before. 
You've been on my mind 24-7 ever since we started going out. No. What? Aren't you happy we're both on the same page? Aww, she's still so adorable. It's so normal. Like, it's absolutely normal. What kind of things have you been fantasizing about? Okay, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> uh, well, I'm being upfront with you about mine, so I think you should do the same. Oh, so you've been fantasizing about things so naughty you can't even say? She slowly walks away from me. Well, I mean, for one thing, you're really adorable. It's hard not to poke fun at you, but... Don't you remember what I said? I want to know what you want. Just say it. The approaching my This approach might be a little aggressive, but I can't wait any longer. That's the red carpet. Go for it. Her real intentions are so like she feels like it's so dirty for such normal stuff. All right, let's do it then. I stare into her eyes and lean in. Are you ready? After holding her breath for a moment, she nods. I love you, Hazuki. We come closer and closer and I plant my lips on hers. Oh, it's so cute! Oh, jeez. God, it's... I, these headphones... God, it's like... It's right there. Like, these are surround sound and they're right... Oh my gosh. <sighs> they're going for it. They're just going for it. She holds him up to me tightly as if the sensation were about to sweep her away. Slurp. Bitch, <laughs> man. I'm guessing this is gonna be a scene that gets cut, but like, like, not not, not eye cutting it, but like that the the that I'm, I'm guessing things are gonna progress and we won't see that because this is the Steam version and the YouTube safe version. But whew, I'm gonna need to get a content rest restoration patch at some point. <laughs> okay, okay, back down, back down. Her lips are soft and so warm. Feels like mine are about to melt into hers. <laughs> Welcome to the ASMR you never expected you'd be getting right now. <laughs> I gotta wonder, how do you record this? Like, genuine question here. I can't imagine sitting here in front of my microphone and doing my best could ever uh, replicate as like a kissing since like sounds like this maybe this is something you gotta practice she responds with even more passion my girlfriend's so lovable i can barely keep my sanity yeah Are they in the booth actually kissing someone? I don't know. It sounds a little too real. After we break the kiss, she stares into my eyes longingly. If this keeps going, I won't be able to stop myself. If we keep going, I'll be past the point of return. I'll need to go all the way. She don't want that. Now's the moment to say. She catches her breath and hangs her head. Then she whispers so softly I can barely hear it. Yep, like I said, quirk. Huh? 
というか私がしてほしい葉月私はいつもキスよりもっとエッチなことを妄想していたあ,あそ,それこそ口には出せないようなことを、oh、boy. サトルくんのことが知りたい誰も知らないサトルくんのことを全部見せ合って触れ合って誰にも負けないサトルくんとの絆が欲しい Are you really、sure? ああ心の準備は OK OK She's embarrassed but resolute I want to know you too. I want to know all of you. I kiss her once more and gently push her down to the bed. Sure. What is it? Ah, okay. It's our first time. I'd like to see her body clearly, but I should respect her wishes. That's good. The light now dimmed, I gently pushed my hands over on her clothes. And that's where we cut away. I'm sure there's more to that scene that we don't get to see. That's fine. It really is okay. Like, I've always said this position before. I think there's nothing wrong with etchy type content, you know, H scenes. All of it. Like, it's fine. I absolutely have no personal issue with it. My issue can come from when it's over, like, super obtuse and fan servicey, you know, where it's not just, like, contextual. It's just about, like, the service itself rather than, like, what's happening in the story. So, for a story like this, I love and want to see, like, the whole scene, like, the everything that the writer intended to kind of be communicated, I want to see that. But the thing is, is that the reason I always play these versions on YouTube is because if I wasn't, I would have to cut it out anyway.、Uh, if you want a good example of that, like、uh, Kadawa Sojo is a great example.、Um, that one was the unedited version.、Um, I had to do some on the fly editing and then I absolutely just cut out sections because YouTube would absolutely not like that. As a matter of fact, this might be demonetized simply from the kissing sounds. Like, that's just what YouTube is like. They can be super stringent and unfortunately, they are unjustly harsh. On visual novels. I don't know why.、Um, I think it's because, like,、uh, a lot of people see issue with characters that are drawn to look young.、Um, as if for some reason it's, like, not two people in the same age category that are well within, like, reasonable, like, Re like, it's reasonable to assume that people who are that age are going to ha can have sexually active lives. I don't know why it's so particular. It's just one of those things. I think visual novels have a bad rap. I think some of the, like, the more extreme visual novels give a bad name to the more normal ones that I would consider Riddle Joker to be, you know, Muff Love to be. Like all these things that like, have these censored versions that kind of have to be available on Steam. So like, I always end up getting on the soapbox, but I think it's just really critical to especially say now is that like, I want to experience the full scene here, but at the same time, does the full scene, besides like cutting out what like the author intended, ultimately it's, it's an enhancement to the narrative, which is what I love. But I also see that we saw enough. It's okay, we understand.、Um, it's a personal preference for the writer. And. So, as long as the writer is okay with the way that this gets presented on Steam, that's really all that matters because it keeps YouTube happy. We get to still enjoy the great story. And then, you know, on my personal time, I get to go back and, you know, see the entirety as long as a patch is available. Hopefully, there is one. But、uh, I just want to say, like, there's nothing wrong with those types of scenes. If anything, I think that they can be wonderful for such a story, especially one like this, where it's clear that the characters are in love and they're exploring a relationship and it's so real and it's something, it's something that actually happens and it's part of like human life and relationship growth. And I think it's not fair to shy away from that, but I understand that there are limits to the platform in which I'm sharing this with you. So.
I really appreciate it. I think that was a very lovely scene, especially with these headphones. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. It was like it was happening right next to me. So it was very intimate for me. But like, that's the thing is it's like such a wonderful exploration of a character development arc of like events happening between two characters. Um, I think it's really important to recognize that there's nothing wrong with what are de like labeled H scenes when they're contextual and like part of a storyline and growing of characters. Um, I think when those scenes can get part of like scenes of like abuse that can be taking it too far if it's super explicit because like the abuse part makes it very bad. But I also think it's understandable like sometimes stories tell unpleasant things and share unpleasant uh, truths and I don't think that should be censored I don't think that should be like hidden it's meant to be an uncomfortable thing because unfortunately our world is full of uncomfortable things and those types of things can happen I don't think it should be glorified I don't think this should be like overly sexualized but like it's also something you have to be able to understand as part of real world and something we should abhor we should be having those really uncomfortable feelings about and sometimes stories and books help us process those things even if they're not things we've personally uh, experienced anyway what's the long and short of this rant i think that it's a shame that we can't experience the full content here i don't feel too bad about not sharing it on youtube um but i do understand like i appreciate those scenes and not because it's pervy Ooh, it's more of like it's part of two people who are falling in love with each other and it's an important step in a relationship and it's one that's a very real important thing and so like i i really appreciate that aspect of it and not everyone will agree that's okay but anyway let's move on yeah someday i'll figure out how to get the full content there uh-oh so that was the end of chapter eight. So now we're in chapter nine. I get out of the dorm and head to the abhorrent school, to this abhorrent school again. Darn place is rotten and corrupt at every single level. They pretend that their goal is to spread awareness about astral abilities and raise their students to become productive members of society. But that's nothing more than a front. The, ac the academy uses its position to get financial contributions from sponsors and donors, and all it's an elaborate money-making scheme. Well, I mean, that's sadly probably true. And where are the zoo animals that keep they're used to keep the curious onlookers coming and dumping cash in their pockets? That's the only reason they're willing to admit people with problematic pasts or those with the unique astral abilities were just tools to them. Mm-hmm. What does the school even do for the students it uses to fleece money out of its donors? If you look at one of the pamphlets, you'd learn that they have programs to facilitate employment for the future or that you can become an astral researcher, but that's just what they want you to think. We do not discriminate based on whether one has astral ability or not. All these companies might tout, tout that nonsense, but that's only that they can pretend they don't. Discrimination against astrals is still alive and well on every level of society. In particular, those who have gotten in trouble because of their abilities in the past. They're branded criminals for life, their future stunted, and this crap hole of an academy is happy to turn a blind eye to that. All information concerning our astral abilities is given to the police, where we're categorized and put on a list. Once they know we have abilities at all, any run-in we have with the law, no matter how trivial, is immediately exacerbated and we're judged unfairly. The police confiscate various weapons from public citizens in order to prevent crime. Guns and knives, of course, but it doesn't stop there. Useful tools like Swiss Army knives and even screwdrivers are also regulated heavily. It doesn't matter who the person is, whether they're a law-abiding citizen or not. Any person in possession of a weapon that could be used to commit a crime is immediately branded a potential criminal. Is that actually a thing in Japan? Like, I know that they have stringent rules about, like, knives and guns and stuff, but, like, are Swiss Army knives and screwdrivers actually regulated? I'm, I'm guessing that's like, taking it to an extreme. That's why our abilities are such a thorn in the side of those pigs. Despite the fact that we have these mysterious and potent, potent powers, they can't take them away from us. So instead, they automatically assume we're guilty. No matter the situation, they'll blatantly say that to my face. You were born a criminal. I tried telling them I was innocent over and over again, but no one cared to listen to my side of the story. Just remembering it all makes me seethe with rage. Interesting. What if this is the guy we had the confrontation with at the gate? The police aren't some arbiters of justice like they preach. They just want to find someone to assign blame to so they can close cases and move on. It doesn't matter how many lives they've ruined in the process. 
In that sense, we astrals are the perfect scapegoats. They use to wipe their no they use us to wipe their noses, and once they're done with us, they dump us in the academy where they can squeeze every even more out of our lives. There's even a student at this academy that comes from a family that's profited off the suffering of astrals. Now she's got even got a boyfriend and walks around the school with a dopey face of hers, like all's right with the world. Just thinking about it makes me sick to my stomach. Uh oh. Oh. She'll probably have an easy life after she graduates here, free of worry, while well, I'll be forced to trudge through the mud like all the people the police have chewed and spat out. Why is she better than me? What did I ever do? Why is this world so unfair? I'll make her pay, I swear on it. I won't rest until you're brought down from your ivory tower and covered in mud like the rest of us. Hmm. I wonder... So are these like incidents with water like being to set, used to set her up? All right, I don't want to end here, so we're gonna keep going, even though it's definitely gonna be putting a weird break in this in the video. But like, I like it's it, I still want to enjoy some time with with Hazuki. Morning classes are over now. It's time for lunch. What do you want to do today? Eat together or just the two of us? Hazuki. Why are you staring at us like that for, Kyohei? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> She's not doing a very good job of hiding this. Huh? What? Thank you, Ayase. It's okay. I'm sure you'll still be popular among guys if you catch my drift. Then <laughs> <laughs> you can call me that if you want. Don't let it embarrass you. いや、いいんだ。取り乱した私が悪い。サトルとの仲は恥ずべきものではないんだから、対戦と構えていればいいんだ。そうだろ。Yeah, I'm sure we didn't go into anything really weird during the like our our evening shenanigans. I think you're pretty cute when you get embarrassed though. うん。私にどうしろというのだ。サトルのバカバカ。うわ、何この2人。甘すぎる。Are you going to eat with us by the way? Sorry, man. Hmm, okay, okay. He leaves it on another word said. I wouldn't think so, but I don't know. It's not like we're doing anything bad. I don't see the need. But we haven't. What the fetch was that? I hear an explosion sound nearby. White blurs of something appear around us and warp the air surrounding air. Hazuki! I immediately cover her and turn my back to the sound. What the fetch was that? I see a big red object rolling along in the corner of my eye. It's a fire extinguisher. We need to get away from here. I grab her arm and run down the hall. Students scream as they escape from the scene. It looks like we weren't the only ones in the vicinity of it. <coughs> Gotta to get you to the, uh, to the uh, hospital wing then or whatever, because that could be bad for your lungs, especially if it's the like oxygen deprivation type of extinguisher. Well, we'll be safe here. Take deep breaths now. The chemical components inside fire extinguishers don't have harmful effects on the human body, so breathing in a little of it shouldn't cause complications. That's not the problem, though. I try to recall the exact moment it went off. Hazuki and I were the only two people close to it. I couldn't have been activated manually by someone. So what? It malfunctioned? No, there's simply no way. The statistical probability of a fire extinguisher breaking and going off on its own is astronomically small, which means someone deliberately set it off. It's them. My intuition is tingling. It has to be the work of that mystery criminal behind the incidents across town. He caused the scene, but stopped short of actually injuring others. It's the same as all the others. But you made a grave mistake pulling one of your pranks here in the Academy, buddy. I can now claim with certainty the culprit is someone connected to the Academy. 
There are surveillance cameras all over the buildings. Examining the footage should narrow down the search. But something else is bugging me. This time, it seemed like the culprit was specifically targeting either me or Hazuki. Which raises the possibility that the Fawcett incident weeks ago was also meant to target her. I'm gonna find you, whoever you are. If they're really trying to hurt Hazuki, I'll make them regret it. Ooh, that got spicy. <sighs> Sorry for calling you uh, here out of the blue. She's in the infirmary resting right now, but she'll be fine. I switched out the SIM card to call Dad. We need to take swift countermeasures now that the culprit has struck again. The, that being the case, I got Nanami to come here so she could present the be present for the discussion. Le Levy 6 speaking, have an update. Today a crime was committed in school grounds, and we have sufficient reason to suspect it was perpetrated by the criminal we're looking for. I proceed to relay to him everything that transpired. So that's why I think we're dealing with the same criminal in this case. So the power is likely not just associated with water, it's pressure. We witnessed the fire extinguisher explode before our very eyes, so it's safe to assume our criminal can apply his astral abilities remotely. What do you say? I turned to Nanami, who's quietly listening in on our conversation. If we don't have access to an algorithm and a team, that's going to take a long time. そこから関係性の高い人物のリストを作ってエイムスと比較照合。これで容疑者は10人以下に絞れる。あとはアストラル能力を見ながら。Looks like we got a lot of work to do. Yeah, it's a lot. Levy 9 says it'll be done. <laughs> I can leave all the nitty gritty work to Nanami. The important part is that we have tools to narrow down the suspects. Thanks. I hang up and quickly replace my SIM card. Sadly, I have no messages or missed calls from Hazuki. Okay, let's get started. What do we do first? Oh, look at you being so productive. データ揃えたら突破に送って映像解析。最速でも明日の朝までかかると思う。解析結果が良好なら、お兄ちゃんと一緒に研究室に侵入。<sighs> but I want to do stuff. All right. I won't let anyone put Hazuki in danger's way again. The sooner we catch the criminal, the sooner we can get back to our daily lives. Is it that obvious? Okay, I'll be careful. Haste makes waste, or so they say. If I let impatience get to me, I could end up making some sort of blunder and ruining everything. Yeah. Thanks, Nanami. While I appreciate her concern, I feel a bit pathetic as her older brother for having to have her cheer me up. I need to keep it together so I don't worry her too much. Mm. It is troubling. Very troubling. Alright, so looks like we're gonna start this uh, next mission post haste, which is really good. But yeah, fetch, man. Let's stop here and that's a lot that happened this episode. I really liked the the ending of chapter eight. Like, obviously, we got a stunted version of it, but that's okay. Um, I already went on my little rant about that. But I'll just say that their their relationship is really well told. It's very sweet, very believable. She's 
super anxious and self-conscious, but like once he kind of broke through that barrier, like, and she started being herself again, like, oh my gosh, just mwah, chef's kiss, beautiful. And now uh, we're here. Unfortunately, somebody on the campus has decided to take her and me out somehow. Like, I'm guessing, like, he said he wants her to be drugged to the muck. So I don't think he actually wants to hurt her. I think he's trying to, to make her look guilty of something. Like, I think he's trying to set her up as the, the person behind everything. So yeah, like, it's going to be really interesting to see if that's how it's going to play out. Like, it's not actually to, like, attack us. It's more to, like, try and degrade her character. And for her, that's that almost worse than physically attacking her. She would be devastated if it if if it looked like she was a criminal of some kind, or inadvertently became a criminal. So yeah, we'll have to see how that all plays out. But hey, thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you spending your time here. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I'm guessing we're kind of approaching the end game because like now we're in a, in a relationship and we've established it. Um, I imagine that we're going to be drawing towards like an overarching climax now. Like obviously, I think we got more time. But I think we're probably in the last third of the game. So, uh, yeah, we're going to enjoy this as much as we can and uh, see how it all plays out. I'm currently trying to play through some of the other endings. It's tough for me to find the time, but like I'm, I'm working my way through it. Hopefully I'll have them all done or at least mostly done by the time we get to uh, the wrap party for this. So thank you guys so much, especially to the patrons. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for your direct support. And to everyone else who's watching, thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys have a great start to your weekend. And until next video watching me, I'll see you next. I'll see you there.